Whiting here with Paddle TV with another in-depth, unbiased gear review. And in this video, we are testing out the PH Sea Kayaks Virgo Touring Kayak. These guys have been making kayaks for a very long time and they're very highly regarded. But you don't see nearly as many of these in North America as you do in Europe because they're made in Great Britain. In fact, I've never had a chance to try a PH Sea Kayak, which is why I'm particularly interested to give this a go. I've wanted to try one for a very long time. Now, any product coming from Europe, you probably should expect to pay a little premium for that. I'm not sure if you pay a premium for this kayak yet. That's what I'm here to find out. I'm gonna take it for a test ride and answer the big questions. Do you pay a premium for this kayak? Is it worth it? And how does this boat stack up buck for buck against other kayaks in its class? Now in previous videos, we've hopped right into looking at the specs and the features of this kayak, but we're gonna change things up this time. I'm gonna get this boat on the water right away, right now, give it a test drive, and then we'll look at its key features. Let's do it. PH Virgo Touring Kayak comes in three sizes the LV for smaller paddlers, the MV for average sized paddlers, and the HV, the high volume, for larger paddlers. The version I'm testing today is the Virgo MV or the mid volume. It has a retail price of $1,899 US dollars. It's 14 feet 5 inches long, it's 23 inches wide. It weighs 56 pounds and it has a max weight of 220 pounds. Its primary use is all conditions touring. Now let's take a look at some of the features of the Virgo, starting with the hull. The hull is a V hull designed to cut through the water smoothly. It's got moderate rocker, which allows it to be quite maneuverable, although still fast. And it has hard chines on the edges for carving performance when edging into a turn. Now on the deck, like any touring kayak, it has perimeter lines and bungees on the stern and bow. It has two bulkheads to separate the kayak into three compartments. One bulkhead is just behind the seat and the other one is just ahead of your feet. It has a number of nice premium features like paddle recesses for a backup paddle, an aluminum security loop, and a paddle park. On the inside, it's got a back band, a contoured seat, and thigh braces. This being the CLX version of the Virgo, it has a mini hatch right in front of the paddler and PH's Core Light X Skeg system. All right, so I've been paddling for about 30 minutes now, plenty of time to get a good feel for comfort and stability. So let's talk about stability of the Virgo first. This is a wonderfully stable kayak for a 23 inch wide kayak. Now that's not a wide kayak. This thing isn't designed to be this ultra stable, stable platform. Uh, it's designed more for speed, but it's wonderfully stable. It's got great initial stability, which is when it's sitting flat, but it also holds on edge beautifully. This is secondary stability here. Wonderfully stable kayak. Now comfort, it's very comfortable. You know, I, I like the seat. Uh, uh, it contours to my butt very nicely. And the uh, hip pads are easily adjustable and I've got them dialed right now. They're good. Uh, foot braces are nice, back pans nice. You know, it's all, it's a comfortable kayak. I don't have anything, you know, exceptional to say about it, but I certainly don't have anything to complain about except for the fact that I'm on the larger side for this kayak. There's no doubt about it. The foot pegs or foot braces are all the way, or at the furthest point, and I'm tight. My feet are starting to go a little bit asleep. I want to be able to move them around in there, but I don't have much foot room with the shoes I have on right now. 
Uh, you know, it's just at, I'm six foot two, 195 pounds, and I'm a little long for this kayak. I would probably myself go for the Virgo HV, the higher volume kayak for general use. But what I do love is that it seems when you have, when you're smaller, you got a smaller kayak, it's, it's higher performance. So the next thing to, ch to test is performance. So I'm gonna push this thing and we're gonna see how it does. Is it really an all conditions kayak? We'll soon find out. This isn't a tandem kayak, little buddy. You go. Come on, no, not a tandem. Thank you. Working up a sweat here, testing this boat's performance for you. I love a boat that performs. You know, I've been testing a lot of sit on top kayaks, inflatable kayaks that aren't really designed for performance. They're designed more for stability than performance. And so hopping in a kayak that is designed for performance, just feels really good. I mean, there's a time and place for every kayak, but the performance of this kayak is awesome. Starting with speed. For a 14 and a half foot sea kayak, it's fast. It's not as fast as a longer uh, sea kayak that's designed specifically for speed, but it's still got wonderful speed and incredible maneuverability. The way this thing turns while you're paddling, when you put it on edge, it's awesome. When, if you just take sweep strokes when you're turning from a still position or turning at speed, absolutely amazing. Couple that with its stability on edge. It's just a fun, 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 fun boat to paddle. I'm really, it's lived up to my performance expectations. Uh, and on the note of performance expectations, something else that's worth noting that I'm trying out for the first time here is, well, this life jacket for one. This is the Kokatat Hustle, and it's the first time I've tried this baby. And then this is the Lendl Storm carbon fiber paddle. Uh, and both of these pieces are not entry level pieces of gear. These are nice pieces of gear. So I'm testing those as well. At the end of the video, I'll let you know my thoughts on these suckers. Performance wise, I love this kayak, but they call it an all conditions sea kayak that's good for playing in almost any type of conditions. We've only been paddling in flat water. It's time to push this thing a little bit, see how it does in some moving water. Now, unfortunately, because of the moving water, the white water in this area, I'm fighting an ear infection and I'm not gonna be going into any big rapids today, but I am gonna put this into, into some current to see how it does. Let's go. I think it's fair to say this boat is tested. Here's what I can tell you about it. I love it. <laughs> I really do. I really love this boat. So the question comes down to really, is it worth the price tag? But let's still, let's first talk about what I love about it. Uh, it's such a great mix of speed and maneuverability. It's a 14 and a half foot sea kayak. That's really what it is. But 14 and a half feet isn't a long sea kayak. So it's got high maneuverability, but it still has the benefits of a longer sea kayak. It's not quite as fast, no, but it's still a fast boat that tracks very well. The hull design is great. It's got that V hull and that bow just slices through the water beautifully. Uh, it's got really nice hard chines or hard edges on the hull, which really let you carve turns nicely, whether you're dealing with current or not. Very stable for the width of this boat, only 23 inches. I love the hull. I love the way this thing paddles. Now on the top, uh, 
the features are, there's not a lot of features, but they're all great. Having this little day hatch here is awesome. A lot, most sea kayaks have it behind you and they're, they're awkward to get at. They're a pain in the butt. I've never really understood that. Uh, this makes a lot of sense. The only problem with this is that you're losing leg space inside the boat where the, the actual container, it's a hard container that's under here, but it's not a real problem for me. I can still get my knees out of the thigh hooks without any problem. Uh, if I was any bigger, like I can feel it, it's there. But I'm definitely at the, the tallest end for this kayak at uh, six foot two. Um, so I love that, uh, this Corelight X Skeg system rocks. It's so smooth and easy to use. It's so much better than a standard rope and, and um, cleat. Uh, skeg system. Otherwise, all, the rest of the features I think are pretty much standard on about this, but it's worth mentioning that the build quality on this is noticeably high quality. Even where they've attached the seat to the boat, they, they've used, they got a nice solid uh, plate here with waterproofing underneath. You're not going to get leakage there and that seat's not going to move. It's just everything's done well on this kayak. And I love seeing things that are done well, that you don't, companies don't cheap out on the smallest of things that make, you know, can just create these, you know, for 25 cents, it could have made such a, a better kayak. And they haven't, seemingly, they have not done that with this kayak. So two thumbs up for this kayak. Um, like I said, I'm definitely on the big side of this thing. So anyone taller than six foot two, it, don't even bother go for the hv in fact i would say that anybody you know six foot and over should be looking at the hv version of the virgo now let's talk paddles the lendl storm i think one of the neatest parts of these whole these gear reviews that i've been doing is trying out different really high-end paddles and this carbon fiber lendl storm paddle definitely qualifies as a high-end paddle. Doesn't mean it's not great for a beginner, but it's great for anyone, but you're paying a pretty penny for this, like any carbon fiber paddle. This is a, a 500 US dollar plus investment, but oh my gosh, you should feel how light this thing is. In fact, try, here. No? Okay, well take my word for it. This thing is absurdly light. If it isn't one of the, it is one of the lightest paddles around. When paddles get to this level of lightness, it doesn't matter if it's the lightest or not, it's ridiculously light and it feels wonderful in the hands. Being all carbon fiber, like all carbon fiber paddles, when you take a stroke, you just get so much power because there's no flex, there's very little flex in this blade or shaft. So all of your power is being translated into propulsion and that's for me that's a wonderful thing that's performance now this paddle is adjustable uh between 215 and 220 centimeters i have it set at 220 centimeters which is typically actually 215 to 20 is what i use for a sea kayak um you know it's nice that it's adjustable by five centimeters to be quite honest five centimeters isn't really enough adjustment to make it uh good for a wide variety of kayaks for example, when I move to a sit on top kayak, I jump from a 215 or 220 to a 235, 240 centimeter paddle. So this isn't gonna do a serve as your one paddle fits all kayaks. But that being said, if you have $500 or so burning a hole in your pocket and you wanna get a nice, nice paddle, this is definitely a paddle to consider. So now the life jacket, the Kokatat Hustle. I've said this before, and I'll say it again right now, is I don't have a lot to say about life jackets. I mean, they're all, I mean, assuming you choose an appropriate one, they're Coast Guard approved. And so it really comes down to personal preference. What features do you want? And comfort, 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 because a comfortable life jacket, PFD, is a life jacket that you're not gonna even think about taking off when you're paddling. The way they've got this thing cut, it's beautiful. It feels like you're getting a nice hug all day long. It's, the foam is contoured. Uh, I mean, Kokotat has have been making PFDs for a long time, and this is just another great PFD. It's, uh, I believe, around 140 bucks retail price. And so it's not a high, high end priced life jacket, but it's for me, it's got everything you really need. And what I like from a life jacket, it's got this one 
big central pocket with dividers inside and it's comfortable and that's all I got to say about it. So to answer the original question about this kayak is, you know, do you pay a premium for this European built kayak in North America? Well, at $1,899, it's not a cheap kayak. It's definitely not a cheap sea kayak, but any high quality sea kayak, not just a rec touring kayak, but a sea kayak, you're gonna be paying in the $1,400 to $3,500 price range for that. And this has, this is particularly well built, has some really nice features to it. It's, it's a very nice kayak. And so I don't feel like you're paying a real premium at $1,899. I mean, yeah, it's a lot of money and it's not gonna be for everybody but do you pay a premium for being European? My feeling is no, you pay, you're getting what you pay for. A really nice kayak. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Yet another gear review. If you have, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to Paddle TV if you haven't already. And if you wanna do me a favor, leave a comment down below, or really about anything, whether you've tested or used any of these products yourself and have your own experiences to share. But also, if any of my gear reviews have helped you make a purchasing decision let me know in the comments box in the comment box down below because that helps tell the manufacturers that hey these things are a value and that's important because i want to keep doing these gear reviews that's all for me i hope to see you guys again soon